three degrees of separation. That's it. That was the difference between the outside temperature of the day I was hurt and the lowest setting of the thermo thermostat. And when that outside temperature dropped below that lowest setting of the thermostat, when those three degrees of separation evaporated, the furnace kicked in, it pulled all the fumes down the cold air return, ignited them, shot them back up, created a violent explosion that changed my life forever. And it changed because of three degrees of separation. What I found interesting though is when I went and turned the thermostat down to its low setting, in order for me to shut off the furnace, all I had to do was take this finger and go on the side of the thermostat and go from heat to cool to off. 0 0.05 seconds is what it would have taken for me to completely shut down that furnace. Now, to be honest with you, though, I was not instructed to shut down that furnace. So instead, I just followed the rules I was told to. Well, let's be honest. How hard is it to really shut down that furnace? How hard was it for me to have gone the full distance on what it took to really prevent that furnace from kicking in and causing any fire? But how often in life do we really take those little exceptions? Like, I'm just going into that workplace really quick. I know I should have my hearing protection or my eye protection on, but I left them in the truck, and I'm only going to be in there for a minute max. I can make this exception this one time. Or how often do we bend the rules or break the policies? Because we're being pushed, we're late, or we're rushed. How often, when it's hot and humid, and really uncomfortable to be wearing a PP do we take some exceptions and unzip it a little, knowing that now we are opening up our protective layer to potential harm to our body, or we roll up the sleeves just because we find it more comfortable. But this doesn't just happen at work on how we take small exceptions to how we should do things. Just think when you're driving. Most people, they drive 5% over the speed limit. All right, let's be honest. They do 10% over the speed limit. Okay, come on. Sometimes it's 15% over the speed limit. But that said, I won't go any more than 20% over the speed limit. Right? Or when we see the light turn yellow. And we know we should slow down and stop. That's what it means. But I can't give up 20 seconds of my life sitting at a red light. And it's really, really hard. When the light turns green, for me to have to accelerate and get back up to speed, it's better off if I just speed up and race through that way. Or we can't even take the one extra second it takes to stop at a stop sign. Instead, we treat it as a yield as we roll right through. We can't even give that extra little bit of time when we're in a school zone or a construction zone. Here we are, we're dealing with the smallest people in the world who don't quite have the same cognitive ability as us, or with construction workers who are trying to make the roads better for us. And in both those instances, we can't be bothered to slow down and show a little respect to these young ones or these construction workers. The amount of exceptions we take in life, they're usually just small little ones but sometimes they add up to big events. And if you don't believe me, all you have to do is drive by any hospital in this world, and you will see that that hospital is overflowing with people. And most of those people in the hospital, they're being treated for illnesses and injuries that were completely preventable from them. But those illnesses and injuries occurred because we took little exceptions in how we do things. I often say that if you want to help the healthcare system, the best thing you can do is stop getting hurt or injured. And we stop getting hurt or injured by recognizing the little exceptions we take in life. So I encourage you to follow your policies and procedures to the fullest. If you are driving to follow the rules for a reason, because the rules 
were created from someone else being injured. And they recognize when you're told to turn down a thermostat and that the whole point is that we're trying to stop a fire from engage from a furnace engaging, that maybe 0 0.05 seconds to hit a little switch and shut the furnace right down might be a better way to go. Now I hope you enjoyed this one safety minute. If you want more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button. If you want to bring me out to your workplace, go to spencerspeaks.ca. And until the next safety minute, stay safe.